Vice President Mehta addressed representatives of the political class, calling on them to take responsibility to resolve the country's crisis in order to avoid a possible confrontation in Albania. One day after giving a statement that they will be represented in the Commission of Electoral Administration Zones, the legal representatives arrived at the CEC meeting, a move which sparked debate. During the reporting on the work of the prosecution for 2018, Justice Minister Etilda Dornai issued criticism against the Chief Prosecutor Arta Mark. It's six o'clock on Friday the 17th of May 2019. Good evening and thank you for tuning in to RTV Aura's English edition. My name is Alexandra, bringing you the only daily update of the local Albanian news translated into English. Given that it seems no political party in the country is willing to take steps to overcome the current political crisis, President Meta issued an appeal stating that the time has come for politicians to take responsibility and prevent any further conflict for the Albanian people. He stated that Albania shouldn't move towards confrontation due to selfish and occult interests, adding that the current political situation should not even exist 22 years after the Civil War of 1997. I think that this situation should have stopped existing 22 years ago, when Albania moved on from the year 1997, which was a really unfortunate year. All should reflect and take on their responsibilities, because neither Albania nor the Albanians need further confrontation, especially due to fully selfish and occult interests. They have decided to live in a democratic way and have been separated from political exclusion since 1990, detailed Meta. In a communication with journalists, Meta said the current situation has also affected the tourism sector. Those who are looking forward to the tourist season expecting an increase in bookings are instead faced with a reduction in bookings due to these occult interests, added Meta. A journalist asked Meta about the Prime Minister's comments accusing the President of not inviting the parties for a meeting to find a solution to the current political crisis before going on to ask if he will undertake such a step in the future. In response, Meta ex again explained that it was inappropriate for the Prime Minister to pass the buck on his responsibilities to the President, warning that the consequences for not developing a solution could be a civil confrontation. No one can pass on his responsibilities to others, especially to the President of the Republic. They know very well what they have to do and they should be aware of the consequences they will face if they lead the country towards a confrontation, retorted the President. A few days ago, President Ilir Meta said that there have been meetings that have not been made public, which focused on fostering dialogue to emerge from the political crisis that has enveloped the country for the past several months. The opposition has officially returned to the election administration process. A day after announcing that they will be represented in the Commission of Electoral Administration Zones, DP legal representatives arrived at the Central Election Commission meeting in the first participatory effort since the election day announcement. Their return has sparked debate. The Democratic Party representative, Nyazi Kosovrasti, sought to participate in the verification of signatures in support of the independent candidates. The intervention has faced opposition from the Deputy Chair of the Central Election Commission, Denar Biba. This is exactly what has brought about the latest clash. Meanwhile, the CEC is continuing with the verification of the decriminalisation forms for the candidates in the June 30 elections, as well as the newly mandated MPs, such as Ervis Mecho, who will become part of the Parliament. The second anniversary of the Rama Basha deal that solved the 2017 political crisis has fallen as the country, yet again, is in the climax of political clashes and divisions. The socialists are preparing for the June 30th elections and the government says they are engaged and committed to guaranteeing the right to vote for the citizens. For those who had a different plan, the Interior Minister Sandra Leshai said that they will be held accountable for their actions. The elections will be held on June 30. Police should take care of the security infrastructure. Whoever violates the right to vote will be under the legal care of the police so that nothing remains without punishment. I am convinced that there will be no such cases, said Leishai. However, the opposition remains steady in their stance that they will not participate in the June 30 elections with Eddie Rama as Prime Minister and that his removal remains a non-negotiable condition for them. For this, the Democratic Party and its allies are preparing the next national protest on May 25. Rama's removal is an emergency as Albania is moving closer and closer every day to a dictatorship. Today, we are all witness to political arrests. 
He's trying to restore a dictatorship. His removal is a national emergency. We are intensifying the action and getting ready for the biggest protest in history to be held on May 25, which will remove the thief, Eddie Rama, from office. 25 May is an appeal to every Albanian to go to Tirana and to give the final blow to this violent clique. It will be the biggest protest and the biggest lesson for this criminal government, said D former DP MP Flamro Noka. This period of time is not only the local electoral campaign, but also coincides with the expected recommendations to be released regarding EU negotiations. The chair of the SP parliamentary group, Talund Bala, expressed optimism from Elbasan regarding the EU decision, while stressing that the protests cannot prevent Albania's progression along the European path. The elections will be held on June 30. All those who prevent voters from participating in elections will face punishment. Everyone knows the consequences if they dare to destroy a polling place or polling materials. Any attempt, whether it with any attempt, whether with Molotov bombs or violence against institutions, to prevent the start of talks, to prevent progress on the European path of Albania, or to prevent justice reform from moving forward, will not succeed. This is for sure. All Albanians are convinced that we have to continue walking along this road as we have started, concluded Bala. Justice Minister Etilda Jornai has again expressed reservations about the work of the prosecutor Arta Marku regarding the limited number of disciplinary investigations against prosecutors. While reporting to the Law Commission, she admitted that there is a legal vacuum, but stressed that the general prosecutor is the only inspection, me inspection mechanism until the creation of the High Inspectorate of Justice. John I also had the same answer for reducing the number of proactive proceedings for corruption and money laundering, where she said that the Prosecutor General has the duty to orient the subordinates. John I said that the government has prioritised the fight against organised crime and corruption for 2019. The tax on Serbian goods in Kosovo is faring well for Albanian exports. Instat data shows that Albanian businesses are gaining more and more ground in the Kosovo market, although it faces significant decline in the other countries. In April alone, exports to Kosovo grew by 70.4%, while over the past four months, the average, average growth was 52%, with a total value of 8.9 billion lek. Despite all international recommendations, it seems that Kosovar authorities are determined not to abolish the tax, thus automatically influencing positive growth for the Albanian economy. The sought-after imports are minerals, oil and building materials. Meanwhile, the landscape with other countries is on the contrary. According to Instat data, in the first quarter of 2019, exports of goods reached a value of 99 billion lek, representing a decrease of 2.3% when compared to the same period of the previous year. The reduced production of both electricity and oil were the main contributing factors to the situation. One in seven citizens have been diagnosed with arterial tension problems, one of the major causes of cardiovascular disease. On World Hypertension Day, the Ministry of Health and the Institute of Public Health organised the scientific forum Basic Medical Control in the Framework of Universal Health Coverage. During the forum, they presented the findings from the implementation of the four-year national program CIE, targeting 35 to 70-year-olds. During her speech, Health Minister Ogeta Manastir-Liu underlined, underlined that in four years, there have been more than 90,000 citizens who have been referred for specialised visits after the results produced from basic medical checkups. One in four citizens' results have high cholesterol. They are at high risk of being affected by heart disease. One in six cases resulted in high blood glucose levels, which is an indicator of diabetes. A further one in 30 citizens were affected by high alcohol consumption, said Minister Manastir Liu. Regarding the opposition accusations that have been cast against this program, Health Minister Manastir Liu said that today, after four years, the best response to these allegations could be taken from the one million citizens who have taken advantage of the medical checkups. False accusations articulated by the mouths of those who want to throw mud on this valuable program. We do not play politics with disease and health, we make health policies. Four years after the initial realisation of this program, the number of checks conducted for the citizens are the best answer for these unfounded charges. Health expenditures are not cost, they are investments, explained Minister Liu. The data collected from these basic medical examinations indicate that there is a high risk for cardiovascular disease, diabetes and other illnesses. 
And that's the news across the country today. Thank you for watching our English edition this evening and be sure to join us again every Monday to Saturday at 6pm for the latest news from Albania. Once again, on behalf of RTV Aura, thank you and good night.